Potter's Journal jugs. Here's some of the 32 jugs I pulled out of an old drawer, abandoned bisque, 30 years old last year when I returned to pottery making. An idea on scale. And um, pulled out of my old truck body kiln shed. A commemorative one. Rooster Hill Pottery, 1985. Also a piece of bisqueware abandoned for 30 some years. Um, unfortunately, there were about uh, eight or so of these commemorative pieces. I let them slip through my hands way too cheaply. I was fortunate to get this one back from a consignment shop. Um, returning to pottery making, I made a return visit to Jugtown Pottery in Seagrove, PA this past fall. Um, however, I had visited the place in 1980 and picked this piece up then. I don't know what they were doing. Uh, I don't remember what kind of work they were doing in the 80s, but um, yeah, the work that was being done now, very alive with uh, um, tradition and growth. And okay, in the 80s, early 90s, for maybe about three or five years, I worked at a Westerwald pottery in Scenery Hill, PA, um, and did piece work there. This piece was, um, I believe, uh, after my time. It looks like the, it says 90 something on there. And I think it may be a candle holder. And last fall, or last summer, I did some two spouted jugs. And uh, I'm making do with uh, Cone 6 oxidation kiln. But by doing some glaze layering and uh, sprinkling some ash on there, um, not only leaving finger marks, but uh, making sure that. Uh, the glaze pulled around them and then seeped underneath. I've been able to get, uh, yeah, some looks that uh, you might uh, hope to get if you had, uh, yeah, a gas or a wood or a salt kiln. Um, why? Yeah, are we looking at jugs? Well, let's see what secret project I've got locked in the studio now. Um, I have started a 101 jug series. I've taken up the, if it's a sporting event, this being Olympic year, the Hobby Potter Challenge. However, I'm um, not going to do no 365. I'm going to do 101 jugs, with each one being different. Okay, and to make the um, the series special and distinctive, and uh, make it stand out from my other work, I got a special stamp made. Okay, and it says. One of one of one hundred and one jugs. And um, it took over a month to get it made. Um, well over a month, or was it two? And it cost eighteen dollars. What did somebody just say to me about a mug? Okay, I've been reluctant to. Um, say how cheaply I sell my stuff for, but when the mug was 1887, she asked, oh, and there was a table full of them, she said, each? Each? Okay, so this is the first time I'm using this. <laughs> Which side is up? <laughs> Which side is up? I can't even see. Um, I, yeah, a mistake in the production of it. Um, since this might be the only time I, yes, yeah, stamp, um, um, stamp these things on camera. Okay, here's the way I requested it with a wide border, and I've used these on mugs, and I think I've demonstrated that or, uh, in one of my clips. 
and then when you push it into the side of the pot you don't get the end of uh, this pushing into the sp side of the pot you get just the impression okay so there's okay jugs is on the bottom there we go like that okay so there's a number of ways I could do this I could put it on the bottom There. Oh, okay, I can read it now. One of one of 101 jugs. I got the first one stamped. Okay, and the other alternative is I could put it on the side of the pot. And um, then a the question, where do you put it? The front, the back, the side? Without thinking, this one is just going to go on. I'm going to have to mark. Okay, there's the top. Um, you know, this is something I didn't think about too. When I do the mugs, I usually, um, this is why I didn't have to put it on a metal or a wooden handle, I usually um, have a hand on the inside. So, okay, there we go. We've got the stamp. Um, one of one of 101 jugs. And I almost lost it already. Okay, so. Each one's going to be different, um, an exploration of uh, different ways of putting on the handles and having them come out in different spots, um, having them be maybe the shapes being different, taller, narrower, fat um, um, necks, but um, it seems that they have started to all take on a familiar shape, what I thought was going to be more of an exploration. A lot of it was worked out in the sketches um, and the batija, but I will do uh, yeah, a number of different types. The Spanish batijo. Um, there are uh, pieces from the states and actually from many different parts of the world where water is important. Um, the uh, Original, then the idea started here in the 2017 uh, journal. Here's uh, one with the spout coming off the front and some interesting ways to decorate them. Um, but uh, trying to say, how can I ever do this and see it done since I only have a short amount of time to make pottery? Um, I broke it down into, okay, doing small series is doing, you know, five of the Botijo with different uh, types of decorations, five face jugs, uh, five banks, and then the Pennsylvania cobalt blue brushwork, um, of which I <laughs> realized that you could do um, a whole series of a hundred um, just with that alone. And then various sizes, uh, working, you know, with small ones being one three quarters to two pounds, and maybe making a smaller group, uh, working with four to five pounds, doing three and three and three. Um, the series is started. I haven't done any eight to ten pound ones yet, but um, yeah, that should happen. Okay, and. The uh, secret's not out. This series is started and well underway. Okay, and tightly wrapped because I've been waiting to get the stamp made. And um, yeah, when we get a special order, the question always is how long will it take you to make it? Um, and we have to what? Uh, we have to wedge the clay, we have to make the piece, we have to monitor its drying, uh, put it through two firings, glaze it. Okay, so I do have the stamp. I was worried about these things drying out too much. Um, it's uh, going to be a little hard to get the stamp and the impression in them, but uh, they're not dried out so far that that won't work. Uh, 
and the series being partially oh here's some I need to get the handles on okay underway um, I think I'm about ready to break out of the plan too that uh, the plan got me started with you know groups of five in one size and three bigger and a couple larger ones um, I think uh, that got me started but um, it and and yeah the sketching you know advance the ideas faster but um, yeah there I'm going all over the place with ideas and um, I think <laughs> when I can get back in the studio hopefully we can yeah start to advance this a little faster but um, this these things surprised me that I just couldn't believe it was like the first time after uh, grandma was gone for five years and nobody knew how to make the nut roll we pulled the first pizza out of the oven and it sat on the counter and just couldn't believe that wow there it is um, <laughs> I did it um, and didn't think it could be done okay so I'm not sure yeah how much I'll continue on the, the face jug part of the series um, I uh, hope to explore a lot of different forms on the jug not just you know like the batijo but the spouts can come out every there's a lot of different ways of yeah doing everything okay yeah so this is coming along that I have shared putting these together in a number of clips and was quite surprised when the first one um, suddenly was looking back out at me um, very real to me um, so those clips will be coming up so stop back subscribe I hope you enjoy my one of one of one hundred and one jug series